Hello everyone and welcome to another game from round 3, it's a game Magnus Carlsen vs Vishwanathan Anand, uh, current world chess champion vs former world chess champion, the two rivals meet again and uh, it's uh, really really an intense game, sorry about not covering it yesterday, it was very late when the game ended uh, and I uh, had to go out for a beer. Uh, there, I'm just uh, gonna put it out there. Uh, but uh, it's really an interesting game and it follows a lot of interesting games that have been played. So uh, let's just check it out. We do have some footage, uh, so let's uh, check out the dose first as well as um, something is uh, lagging in my in my PC, so hopefully it will it will go smoothly. So here we have uh, a nice photo of Anand. He's just uh, you know observing some not not photo a video observing some other players uh, enjoying enjoying the views and there you have it it lags a bit but i, I have no idea why all the other videos are, are pretty normal uh so there you have it a very nice footage of anand just you know chilling enjoying his position uh then we have uh, a nice photo of magnus here uh just you know uh, also enjoying his position, thinking about what to do. And here, lastly, we have yet another uh, nice footage of Anand. There we have it. Uh, extreme high quality. Uh, compliments of the Granky Chess Classic video team. Uh, so I do hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I certainly have. I always enjoy some high quality footage. Now let's check out the game. Carlsen has the white pieces. He started his first two games with two wins with the black pieces. Now he gets the white pieces against Anand. Uh, so c4, uh, uh, Carlsen goes for the English uh, opening and uh, so far uh, Carlsen had uh, uh, e excellent success with the English. We have e5 by Anand, we have g3, preparing to fianchetto the light square bishop, knight to f6, uh, and knight to c3. Uh, bishop to b4 by Anand and here Carlsen goes e4. And uh, this is the uh, same line as Carlsen played against Caruana in the World Chess Championship match in London in 2018. Uh, it was the, the 13th game or the first game of the rapid section uh, where the uh, game continued with castles, Corona castle, but here uh, Anna prepares a different line. He plays bishop captures on c3, uh, which uh, deviates from the line that Carlsen won against Caruana in the World Chess Championship match. D captures on c3, uh, and now of course you cannot capture uh, on e4, it's a pre pretty similar idea as in the Rui Lopez where uh, black goes for this idea. Sorry about that, I didn't even realize. Uh, the queen will just go for the e5 pawn and the knight on e4, you'll have to move the knight and then you capture this with check and black doesn't really have anything to show for this. So after d captures on c3 we have d6 by Anand and now comes f3, strengthening the e4 pawn. Uh, and here uh, there is another game uh, where bishop to e6 was played. Carlsen played it against Petrov in the uh, 2018 World Rapid Championship in St. Petersburg and uh, here Anand doesn't go for bishop to e6 like Petrov did, uh, Anand goes for a5 and it's uh, the same game uh, that uh, 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 happened between Peter Swidler and Evgeny Tomaszew Tomaszewski in the Bundesliga 2018, Tomaszewski went for this a5 line against Swidler. Uh, but okay, knight to h3, and here uh, is where we once again deviate, uh, Tomaszewski played knight to a6 against Svidler, uh, and uh, that game ended in a draw, but here Anand goes for a4, so it seems uh, Anand outprepared Carlsen for this game, uh, this is a new move, and uh, well, we have a new game now. Uh, Carlsen goes knight to f2, uh, we have bishop to e6 now, and here comes bishop to d3, just developing the bishop, knight bd7 by Anand, and here comes queen to e2, and here uh, Anand uh, already gives Carlsen some advantage in the in the opening, uh, the correct line is knight to c5, uh, and now if Carlsen tries to force f4 like he did uh, in the game, now you just capture here, and after queen captures, e captures on f4, g captures, and the knight to g4, uh, hoping to exchange yet uh, another piece, black will do will do well here. Uh, but here Anand played c6 and it seems to be a bit too slow. Carlsen immediately advances his f4 pawn uh, and now we have knight to b6 uh, with a double attack against the c4 pawn but uh, the pawn is protected twice so there's no problems there. Uh, bishop to e3 uh, and now comes c5, just uh, closing the center uh, with further control of the d4 square. Uh, we have queenside castle by Carlsen and now comes queen to e7. Anand still keeping his options of castling open, uh, but it is very unlikely that he will castle uh, kingside as f5, g4, g5 uh, would be pretty uh, pretty scary uh, from black's perspective. Uh, we have f5 by Carlsen, bishop to d7 and now comes g4. So Carlsen already starts to advance his pawns on the king side. Uh, h6 preventing g5 but uh, Carlsen just pushes h4 so g5 is coming uh, and Anand castles queen side he's uh, not interested in keeping his king in the center or the queen king side 
uh, g5 by Carlson, uh, and knight back to e8. And here just bishop to d2. Uh, we have h captures on g5, h captures on g5, and knight to c7 now. Uh, we have knight to g4, Carlson just keeps increasing the pressure, and here rook d to g8. Uh, rook to h2, Carlson now hopes to double up rooks on the h file. Uh, queen to f8, and now just rook d to h1. Carlson is hoping that Anand will capture uh, on h2, so Carlson would keep his control of the h file, and of course uh, Anand is hoping Carlson will capture and exchange everything uh, along the h file, which Carlson of course isn't interested in doing. Uh, king to b8, Anand just improves the position of his king, and now b4. Uh, as uh, the, the the idea in the king side is uh, in the center is pretty closed, uh, Carlson has the control of the h file on the on the king side, and now it's time to transfer the game over to the queen side. So it seems ever since uh, the <laughs> the games by Alpha Zero were published, it seems that every high level game is played on both king side and queen side. Uh, and here, if you don't react to this, if you play something like uh, let's say f6, uh, then a3 just uh, cements this structure on the queen side, and uh, well. White will keep his control on the king side. Let's say captures, captures. Now uh, White would control the center. White would also control the queen side, and White would have complete control of the h file. Therefore, control of the king side. So Anand isn't interested in this. He plays a captures. Uh, sorry, a captures on b3. Ampasan. A captures on b3, and now knight to c8. Just waiting to see what Carlson will do. King to b2, and now queen to d8. And here, rook to h7, grabbing more space on the king side. So not really a threat or anything, it's just a, a nice bone, bone in, in, the th in the throat. Uh, so rook captures on h7, Anand decides to trade one pair of rooks. Uh, rook captures on h7, and now rook to h8, hoping to trade off yet another pair. And now just queen to h2. Uh, we have rook captures, queen captures, Anand is now successful in trading off the rooks, and now queen to f8, just defending the g7 pawn, and asking Carlsen, what do you want to do here? The material on the board is completely equal, uh, Carlsen still has the bishop pair, but unless he is able to activate the bishop pair, uh, there's no way to take advantage of the bishop pair. Uh, knight to e3 by Carlsen, uh, and now comes knight to e7. Uh, we have king to c2. Uh, Carlsen now wants to bring his king over to the king's side. We have queen to g8, uh, and now just queen back to h4, and queen back to f8. And here Carlsen goes king to d1. So here, if you remember Carlsen's game uh, against young Vince, when Carlsen was doing all, all of those king moves, uh, Vincent was spending a lot of time. But it's not the case here. Anand is not uh, puzzled by Carlsen's uh, king moves, and he keeps uh, playing even faster than Carlsen. Uh, knight to c6 by Anand, and now queen back to h7. Uh, Anand repeats, knight to e7. Uh, he keeps control of the g8 square if he wants to kick away Carlsen's queen with king to g8, as the, the queen trade wouldn't really be favorable for Carlsen. Uh, king to e2, now comes knight back to c8, and king to f2. Knight back to e7, Anand repeats, and now bishop to e2. Uh, what's Carlsen's idea? Well, you will just have to wait and see. Uh, queen to g8, again Anand forces Carlsen's queen back, we have queen to h1, and now g6. Uh, hoping Carlsen will, will either push or, or capture on g6, as that would pretty much take care of all the tension on the king side. Uh, queen to h6 by Carlsen, and now knight back to e8. Uh, we have f6 finally, and now knight comes to c6. And here Carlsen goes b4. Now everything is settled in the center, everything is settled on the king side. Now Carlsen once again transfers the game to the queen side, hoping that Anand captures, that uh, Carlsen can undouble his pawns, push b5, and grab even more space on the queen side. Uh, Anand ignores this, we have knight to c7, and now comes b captures on c5. d captures on c5, now the d file is not open, and, uh, well, whoever gets to use it will be very happy. Uh, knight to d5 by Carlsen. Again, hoping if uh, Anand captures, then he will once again undouble his pawn structure. Uh, knight to e6 by Anand, uh, and here comes uh, bishop to e3, just keeping everything in check. Uh, Carlsen's bishop pair is doing good work now, keeping control of all the pawns and all the squares in the center, and uh, Anand's knights are not yet uh, able to activate. Uh, king to a7 by Anand, and now bishop to g4. Uh, and here, the idea is, if Carlsen is able to capture the knight here, he will remove the defender of the c5 pawn, hopefully capture the pawn then, and uh, uh, proceed that way. Anand, of course, doesn't allow it, he protects the pawn, b6, 
uh, and here knight to c7 a very sneaky move by Carlsen here if you capture the knight then Carlsen captures the bishop on d7 and now uh, only good move is queen to a8 defending the knight and now queen to g7 uh, again black has two weaknesses you will not be able to defend if knight d8 defending the pawn then queen to f8 the white queen infiltrates and it will be very hard for black to hold this position uh, Anand isn't interested in this. Anand immediately goes queen to c7. He wants to kick away the knight. And now comes knight to b5 check. Uh, we have king to b8 and now knight back to d6. Attacking the queen and the f7 pawn. So Anand has to defend it. We have queen to g8. And now that the knight is here, we have queen to h1 here. Uh, you can see this very nice idea of queen d1, queen a4, queen a6, and queen uh, b7 checkmate. Of course, that's a lot of moves. Anand will also play something. Uh, but it is a nice uh, trajectory for the white queen to follow, if, if possible. Uh, so, queen to f8. Uh, Anand immediately wants to get rid of this knight. Uh, queen to d1, uh, defending the knight here, and also preparing knight to b5. Uh, we have knight c to d8, now the bishop controls the a4 square, and here Carlsen closes it, knight b5, now definitely preparing queen to a4. Uh, bishop to c6, putting pressure on the e4 pawn, and now just king to g1. King to g1, uh, a very strong move by Carlsen, preparing uh, a very strong maneuver, but it's very hard to spot it. Uh, here, knight to c7, hoping to uh, get a favorable trade on b5, and here there is only one good uh, move that allows Carlsen to push for advantage. So, uh, Take, uh, you know, consider this position, think you're playing with the white pieces and uh, try to figure out how to continue this position with white. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. It's a really strong idea, so, you know, take even, even a minute if you feel like it or half an hour if you have. Uh, for those of you uh, that that were able to do it, congratulations. Uh, it's really a, a wonderful bishop maneuver. Also, Sese recommended it. Uh, so congratulations. Sorry about that if you found it. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, bishop to f2. Uh, now you see the idea behind Carlsen's king to g1, making room for the bishop here. The bishop is now coming to g3, and the e5 pawn is very weak. Uh, Anand continues knight to b7, and now comes bishop to g3, uh, attacking the pawn here. And here's the problem. If you play something like queen e8, defending the pawn, then you get knight d6. Uh, and after captures, captures, now both the queen and the bishop are attacking the pawn. Bishop captures on e5 is here, and black's position will fall apart. So, uh, uh, after bishop to g3, Anand doesn't allow knight d6, he captures on b5. We have bishop captures on b5, c captures on b5, and now queen to d6. Uh, defending the pawn and here is the critical moment of the game once again feel free to pause the video here and uh, try to imagine how you would uh, continue this position with the white pieces i'll give you a couple of seconds as usual for those of you who were able to do it congratulations you are just a just a just a real mastermind of chess as this is a really really difficult position uh, and for those of you who who just want to enjoy the show the idea is king to f1 uh this is uh Carlson missed this idea but it's really really uh complicated and it's really hard to spot why the line Carlson uh played isn't just as good but the pro the thing is after king to f1 Queen captures, bishop captures, and now knight captures on b5. Now you capture on e5 with check, king to c8, and now you go bishop to e2. Uh, you force the knight to move, the bishop protects the c3 pawn, and now after the knight retreats, now you go bishop to g4 check. King to d8, and now bishop captures on c7. King captures on c7, and now e5. Uh, and after black makes a move, let's say king to d8, you don't want to allow e6 and f7. Black king has to keep an eye on the pawns. Now bishop to f3. You threaten the knight, and now the knight can't go here or the here because the king is there. You have to go knight a5, and now you push e6. F captures on e6, and after bishop to e4, you're going to eliminate the g6 pawn. You're going to be left with two connected pass pawns on the king side, and this will be winning. So this was the, the win idea for white. And Carlsen uh, played queen to e2, and this allowed Anand, for, uh, Anand to, to go for a brilliant defensive line. Anand played knight to e6, now threatening to capture the g5 pawn. And if uh, Carlsen doesn't want to allow this, if he still wants to keep the bishop pair, he will have to lose material. So here, uh, Carlsen doesn't find any way to continue. 
and there really isn't any. Uh, he plays bishop captures on e6, he has to get rid of his strong bishop. We have queen captures on e6, and now queen to h2. And it's still a very strong idea. You're going to capture this. Uh, some uh, back rank ideas do become possible, uh, but Anand calculates everything precisely. We have queen to g4. Now pinning the bishop, also uh, preparing to capture on g5. We have king to f2, uh, unpinning, but just queen captures on e4. We have bishop captures on e5 with check, king to c8, and now comes queen to h3 with check. Uh, king to d8, and now queen to h8 by Carlsen. We have king to d7, and here you have to try and figure out how to continue this, but there is no way. For example, a nice line is queen to b8, just threatening queen c7 check followed by queen to e7 checkmate, uh, but it doesn't work. Uh, after king to e6, you, you run out of ideas. Uh, for example, queen e8 check, you will go king to f5, and now after queen captures on f7, now the king is very close to the white king, you can just go queen c2 check, king e3, now you can check the king here, king f2, queen c2 check, and you have a perpetual, there's no way for white to get rid of uh, all the checks. So after king to d7, Carlsen saw that there's no way for him to continue the attack, he went back, we have queen to h3 check, king to d8, and it was in this position on move 63 that the players agreed to a draw. Uh, so yeah, uh, a great game by both of them. Uh, Carlsen really created a lot of chances. First he, he closed the center, then he closed the, the king side, then twice uh, continues to push on the queen side and really playing on, on every side of the board. Uh, and then at that one moment where he had a chance after queen to d6 to find this, uh, well, exquisite line, we can say, uh, that allows him to outmaneuver the, ni the knight pair with the bishop pair. He missed it. He went for, for a queen to e2, but, uh, well, no one can really blame him. Uh, just it, It's just that uh, lately he's uh, really uh, gotten people used to him playing always the, the top engine line, and now when he misses it, everyone in the chat is always like, oh, how, how did he miss it? You know, he, 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 uh, he knows nothing. Uh, but uh, I mean, I mean, you can't uh, expect uh, humans to to always go for the for the top engine line. Uh, but uh, really, an impressive line. And here he missed one little thing, and it was enough for Anand uh, to really show his class and and uh, perform this brilliant defense that allowed him to to, to grab the draw and uh, prevent uh, Carlsen from grabbing yet another full point. And I did prepare uh, a few photos here. There we have a nice photo after the game. It's after. Uh, the game finished, they are just, you know, analyzing, uh, you know, saying uh, which lines they've shown. And uh, after the game, in an interview, uh, Anand actually said that he he, he saw the line that uh, allowed Carlsen to win and that he thought Carlsen would play it, but Carlsen didn't, didn't spot it. So there you have it. And also, as you all enjoy the standings so much, here are the standings after round three. Carlsen and Svidl are sharing first place with two and a half points. Then we have with two points, Fabiano Caruana and Vishwanathan Anand. Uh, with a point and a half, uh, we have Maxim Vashiel Lagrav and Levon Aronian. With one point, uh, Paco Vallejo, Georg Mayer, and Arkady Najdic. And in last place, with zero points, but with uh, exquisite games so far and with a deadly stare, of course, Vincent Keimer, the star of the show. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Once again, sorry for not showing it yesterday. I was really, really too tired. Uh, I would like to thank Vincente Quintanilla, Peter East, uh, Simon Johansson, Lucas Williams, and uh, Teague Moriarty for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon uh, with round four of the Grand Chess Classic. Uh, do check out uh, the links in the description below. Impressions from round three and an excellent interview with Fabiano Caruana after his game with Vincent Keimer yesterday. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, that's it. Uh, I will see you soon. Have an excellent rest of your day.